it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got a rather large project to share today and it's this lovely storage box in the shape and style of a circus tent. So the inspiration has come from that gorgeous circus collection that I've been making and sharing and talking about lately by Craft Consortium. As soon as I got it I knew I wanted to do some storage and um, I need something to put my wool in and some strings and things like that. So that's the idea is to put it in this. However, I'm kind of thinking, maybe not this one. I probably will end up still keeping this one for myself. But I think I'm going to make another one as a gift. They make lovely gifts. I think you can personalise them. They're, they're wonderful like bedroom storage for children, but also to make them more into the, the theme and the colours of your own home, your own room. I think they would look lovely as well. And they are, there's a lot of room in these. You're talking, well, the hexagon is seven and a half from the, let me just do the widest point. No, eight and a half by seven and three quarters and then the height because you can have stuff you know up into the roof here but the main height's eight and a quarter up to here and then you've got another six inches on top of that so I mean on my mat here in terms of height you're looking not including the flag 12 inches tall so it's a really lovely piece and it's solid it's all made using the two mil grey board and I love it. So yeah, let me show you how to make this really fun piece of storage. Okay, so first of all, I've gone ahead and just cut myself six pieces of four and a quarter by eight inch two mil chipboard. Okay, now the height actually can be anything you want. So if you want to have this a lot taller then you can. That's not gonna affect really too much here. You might have to extend the lengths of the strips once you see me doing all of that, but the width is four and a quarter. So I've just cut these using a blunt blade on my Fiskars trimmer, just this one here. I just mark my blunt blades with a black um, marker there. You just have to run them through a couple of times um, and then that will cut that for you. And then what I've gone ahead and done is I've just cut strips of paper here. I just always use, whenever I kind of do like the hinges, I use this one here which is from Lidl and it's 135 GSM. So I've just cut myself these strips which are one inch by just longer than the height. So whatever height you're doing you'll have to obviously have them a bit longer. But these are nine and a half. It's just the default width of that particular paper. But it just means I've got enough to be able to just kind of roll it over the top there. So first of all I'm going to work on one of the, well I'll do three at a time. So it's kind of like I'm working on one side and then we'll do the other side. But all you're going to do is start building it together. And we're basically just going to do this just as I've you know done like the bureau all the other storage kind of boxes and stuff but you want to give yourself that gap like you do when you make your mini albums so I'm gonna pop this strip here what I might do is actually put it underneath like so and at least then you'll be able to see kind of the gap that I'm doing so I'm just gonna use glue here and what I might do is actually cover you know just like half an inch on this side here and then I'll cover half an inch on the other side, but at least this way you can see exactly what I'm doing. So like so, and I'm just gonna flip it over and just stick it onto half of this. So, you know, stick it on whatever way works for you. I'm doing it this way just so you can see in the video. And then what I'm gonna do is now, I'll just add my glue onto this half here. And then I'll grab this one and just stick it down, making sure that you've got a gap here which is the same width of your chipboard and then I like to give it a little bit extra. That way you just won't get any, you know, um, cracking with your paper, your card stocks, things like that. You don't want too much pressure on there, you want it to be able to move quite freely, like so. And then we will end up wrapping these around and then we'll cover the inside. But now you can bring up there you can see we start to get one of the corners to our hexagon box. It's going to look really good. In fact, I will stick these bits over now, get them out of the way. Like so, and then just grab your bone folder and just kind of push in the paper like that. Okay, then next we want to move on to the next one. So I'm going to grab that strip. As you work along, just make sure, like use the lines on your mats or a ruler and just make sure that when you stick each one down, you're keeping them obviously nice and straight. You don't want to start kind of, um, you know, going off in one direction. So again, I'll just show you here. So I'm just going to add my glue on there. Pop this one underneath. Like so. It doesn't really matter with the first half that you stick down but it's when you go to add that next bit. So you'll see mine are all 
lining up along this line here and then when I go to stick this one down here I leave that same gap and just keep your ruler there and that way you can ensure that everything's nice and straight. Okay, so that's all of them stuck together and then we've got the last one there, but I think just before we actually connect it, it might be worthwhile just covering inside here because you're going to put your pattern paper or you may put a plain paper in here, but I think it's worth just sealing it up. So you just want to trim, like I said, I've, I've cut quite a few strips here, so I'm just going to trim some of these down just so that they can cover inside of here. So Okay, so that's now all done it's really secure and I just got this long piece and then what I just went ahead and done is just when the glue's dry just go in and you know still be careful but just start to mark with your you know kind of like the school I guess it's like a school line really that you're doing and it will just help that all kind of you know fall into shape but you can see now all we've got left to do is join that together and you've got your shape you've got your hexagon shape there so this one's a little bit more I guess slightly fiddly so I'm actually going to add the glue onto one half of this one first. I've got my two strips left here. Again I'm just going to sit that one just so you've got you know that half of it overhanging. You can see there just in frame. Just make sure that's all nice and secure and then I'll put the glue on this side here. This is the Cosmic Shimmer Glue I'm using. I would usually use the book binding glue, but I still haven't got around to buying another one. But um, it seems to be working really well. So then I'm gonna bring this one in. Now you don't really need to worry about the gap so much now, because this is the last piece and it's already in the shape, but I'm sticking it just right on top of that one, just so that we've got the angles all correct. And then just kind of start to fold that over. So the glue, this, this glue does grab very quickly, so it's, it's very similar to the book binding glue. And just pop it on the side there and you can push down on your mat. And then move on to that side and again you can push down like so. And then I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on the end of that piece there. Fold that one over. You can just go in again with your, your bone folder there, just really spreading that out, making sure you've got no kind of lumps or bumps anywhere. See now that just wraps around and then I can just trim that one. And just line it up with one end. I know you can't see this, but just about. Again, I'm not too worried that they don't line up because this is all going to be covered up with pattern paper. This is, you know, purely just for the hinges and to get it all connected but just carefully just rolling my bone folder along the corner there. Okay and then just kind of reshape it a little bit once we add the base that will bring it into shape but you can see we've got it there and it looks really really cool I'm super pleased with this so now we can move on to the base. Okay so what you're going to need to make do the base is I've cut a piece of copy paper here we're just going to make a template first and this is seven and a half inches wide. Don't worry about the length, we're gonna be trimming all that away. So if it's 11 or A4 length, it's fine. What you wanna do is grab this here, and I'm gonna, this front one here, I'm gonna line up this with the bottom of the paper, okay? So it's bang on, nice and straight. And then the point here, you want to make sure it hits the very end of the paper here. I know it's a bit hard for you to see because of the how tall this is, but I'm now making sure that this point here is right at the end of the paper here. I've got this piece, if I come up a little bit higher, there we go. I've got this panel here in front of me is running completely straight 
with the bottom of the paper. Now, if you've got your, you know, your cutting machines and stuff, you'll be able to do this and just put in a hexagon and, you know, resize it. It'll be easy. But there's a lot of people that don't have all that. So I'm trying to show you ways to make these things, even if it's a slightly more obscure shape. There are ways around it. Then this top one, you need to make sure is completely straight, bang on, with the top. So you've got three things you've got to focus on there. So you do have to kind of pull it out a little bit, manipulate it a little bit to get it exactly where you need it. So but I think just kind of play around with it for a little while until you've got those three kind of areas right where they need to be. So I've got my top completely straight. I've got this hit in the corner here and I've got the bottom here nice and flush. Once you're happy that you've got that all in place, you can just draw around it. And we're going to tidy up the sides a little bit more in a minute anyway. Oh, I've just shifted that one. I need to make sure. So don't rush it. You want to make sure that you do get it, you know, as spot on as you can. And then just draw around. But now you'll see I've got a pretty good hexagon shape there. And what I would also say at this point is make sure that the, the width here, so it's about four and three eighths, is the same here, which it is, it's bang on four and three eighths. And again, the sides here should be pretty much the same. So I've got about four and a quarter ish there. And I've got again, four and a quarter there, um, there. Yep, as long as they're all, yep, they're all, they're all okay. So I'm now gonna just cut this. And then what I would suggest you do is cut a little bit more off again. Cut about one eighth of an inch off. You can cut it on your trimmer if you want, but I just try and get those all kind of together there, like so. So let me again just check here. And if you want to do like, um, so this is the front, this is the back. So again, I can just double check. I want to cut it in now, so it's about four and a quarter, and then there, four and a quarter, so they will come in a little bit, but that one's a little bit bigger. So you just need to kind of just pull in the sides a little bit, because we want this to sit inside as opposed to outside. Because if I was to put this on here now, it kind of, it's too big for the base. See, it will all go on there. And once we add the hinges, this will, you know, all come into shape perfectly but like so it's just a little bit too big I'm just going to bring in my little trimmer here I'm just going to take off like one eighth of an inch just a little bit on each side but as long as you're doing the same you just want to shrink it down a bit and it's just because we've we've drawn around something when you trace around something you make it a little bit bigger so we need to just bring in those sides a little bit I think we're about right there I'm coming in, so it's seven and a half, and I'm literally just kind of under that, which is perfect. And again, just measure. So I've got four and a quarter, and bang on, those are the, those are fine. And that's four and a quarter. That's four and a quarter. That's a little bit over. I think I might bring that one in a little bit, and that's four and a quarter. So I just need to. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so your side should be around that four and a quarter mark, and this should be just under seven and a half wide here. But that's the easiest way to get that shape. Now you can just trace around this again on a piece of grey board. You can also print a hexagon to this size off the computer if you want to do it that way. But again, not everybody has access to these things. So, but I'm now going to draw around this one. You won't need to trim anything off the grey board because you're so close to it because it's paper. There's nothing bulky. So, and then I'll keep that for next time because that's all done now. And then I'm just going to cut this now on my trimmer. Okay, so you would have just been watching me then. What I'm trying to do is just kind of wedge it in here. So can you see it sits perfectly in the top here and here, but it's just kind of going over here. So all I'm going to do is just kind of with a pencil. You don't have to have it so that it goes inside, by the way but I just think it might make it a bit easier to stick it together. So, and then I'm just going to, so yeah, I'm just shaving a little bit off so I can see exactly where. And actually what I'm going to do is just use, I wonder if these will cut through. Yeah, these are pretty good little scissors. And that way I should be able to wedge that in 
I mean we're going to attach the hinges in a moment next anyway but and always remember which way you're working so I know that that was in there so now that should all wedge in there quite nicely there we go perfect that's what we want to achieve and then we're going to add the hinges now onto all of this and we'll put them inside so you can go in there and we can just push well pushed it out but you know what I mean you can push it down but that is perfect now and we've got that great shape the roof is going to be very um well much easier I mean I guess that's as complicated as it gets is getting that hexagon base but hopefully by doing the template and just those measurements that I've given you you'll be able to get it as close to you might have to just shave a few bits off you know of a few of the sides but I think we've got there so next I'm going to just cut the hinges and we can start doing that okay so I've just gone and cut these hinges which are one inch by four and a quarter I'm just going to fold one of them in half you'll want to do this on all of them but I'll just start off here so just fold it in half now this is the whole width here so this is four and a quarter so it's going to sit perfectly over there and it will meet the corner if you if you need to trim yours you might need to make yours a little bit longer because obviously you know everybody your base may be a little bit different but again you can see this next one is going to then overlap that one and join again there and it's just going to hold all that and it will come up nicely on the sides there as well so I'm going to add my glue and what I will then do is go inside and um, push down against it so actually I'm going to add the glue on both sides there or you can add the glue actually onto the grey board whatever works best I'm going to stick it like that and then flip it over and I can just go and push against that and just work your way around doing that on each side Okay, so it's now been a few days, actually it's probably been about a week, um, I've had a bit of a sort out from my craft room and probably things look a little bit different here as well, but this is where we got to, I'm really pleased with it, it's a really nice solid storage piece. So now we want to move on to the lid, so I've started cutting some here with the same grey board that I've been using throughout and I want to... I want to have the lid so it will lift off and it will be the, the roof of the tent so it's going to have that, that point. So you need to create all these triangular pieces which are going to attach to this side piece here. So they're going to kind of be hinged like that and once we build up all of these around the hexagon sides of the lid there we'll have our lid. So you're going to need six pieces so I've already done two here and the easiest way to do it is if you cut a piece of grey board that is what's the height I've got here five and a half if you want to do if you don't have anything long and you're cutting them all from lots of scraps then you'll just want a piece of grey board that's five and a half by um, what are we looking at here that's probably better to measure on this one here it's four and three eighths because let me check that one yeah four and three eighths okay so it's a funny measurement but we need it slightly bigger than the four and the quarter which is the width of these so it fits over this because basically these pieces are going to go over the sides this is the lid and this is what I'm going to decorate and you know make look lovely and everything so yeah so five and a half by four and three eighths if you want them individually otherwise I've just got a longer piece here and I've just tried to do as many as I can because I can now cut four out of this because when I cut down here and here I will have this one and this one here okay so it's up to you you might be using lots of scraps or you've got pieces like this and then just using my trimmer again I can just come in now and follow the lines that I have here and then I'm just putting a little fold in just so I get that crease on that side and then I can just pop it in my trimmer and now I've got a nice cut so I'm just going to go along and cut those to get these four triangles okay so there are my six triangles and these are all going to attach onto six pieces of four and three quarters by one and a half. If you want it to be wider than that, then you can do because the one and a half is how much it's going to hang down here. So if you want yours to come further down here, then that's fine. But you do need it to be that four and three eighths of an inch, so it will go all the way around. 
So I'm thinking the best way to do this first is to attach each one to one of these. Now you want to make sure they are the same length. That one's a little bit bigger. Let's just check another one because I may have cut that one. Yeah, that one's perfect. I might have to just trim that one down a little bit. But you want to stick these. So I've just got lots of bits of scraps of my paper here. And I'm going to trim this one to four and three eighths by one inch. I'm still going to stick with that same sized hinge that I've been using. Once I've done this one, then I'll pop it on high speed and just whiz through all the others. But I'm just going to just fold in half there and then I'm just going to pop some glue down here and I'm going to pop it on the edge of this one here and what you'll find you'll probably have to, no actually you won't, you can leave it overhanging because once they all start joining together then you can just stick it onto there, if you want to trim it where you can but I don't think you're going to need to so I'm just sticking it on there like so and then I'm going to pop my glue onto this side and then stick it on there again, just leaving that little bit of a gap. But the, the difference with this one is they're going to be going onto an angle like that. But you want this to be able to move because you don't know what that angle is going to be yet. So you do want there to be, you know, that decent gap in between, which is the, again the width of the grey board. So in my, in my case, it's two mil plus a little bit more, just a little bit of a, an, an extra bit there just to you know, make sure you don't get it cracking. But again, I can kind of give you more of an idea now. So this is gonna go like this, and then it's gonna come up into the center. We're gonna join all these together. So I'm gonna carry on now and get all of the other kind of bottom pieces attached to the triangle there. Okay, so I've got all of those ready and I did trim off the little bits there. I think it's going to be easier for the next step. So what we want to start doing now, in fact, I'm just going to trim that bit away from there, is we need to start putting these all together, but just attaching just the these bits together. So don't, you know, ignore all this. In fact, if I flip it over, it'll probably make a bit more sense. We're just going to be attaching these together. So I've got these little strips here, which are two by one. Again, just folding them in half to create our hinges and you're going to stick I'll start off with this one you're going to stick them exactly the same way I'll just pop them in there so they don't rattle around they're gonna we're sticking it just the same way as all the other hinges um, I've done these at two just so you've got a little bit to wrap underneath but you're going to stick it right up to the top you know of that piece there like so and this piece in a minute will wrap up over itself and then you're going to add your glue to this side and stick this one on here. Again, giving the same gap that you've been doing, you know, throughout. And then just lift that up over to there. Because eventually we'll be covering all the inside as well. So if you just do this now, it will just help tidy it all up. And now you can see how this is all going to start to come together. Like so. Okay, so you need to do that with all of these pieces until you've got one long strip and then we we'll join it together and then we will then make our hinges to stick all this together and then it's just adding your pattern paper and filling, you know, decorating the inside so it shouldn't take too much longer. Okay, so I've got all that. I'm really pleased with it. I've just done a little test around the top and it does fit. It's going to fit really well. It looks like a big crown at the moment. But what I'm thinking before we attach with this hinge here, it may be worthwhile just sealing the bottoms because you're going to be adding your pattern paper to this. So I've just got these long strips of one inch by as long as you can get really because you just want to cover all the way along here um, and have a little bit overhanging. So I'm going to have a little bit overhanging, can you just see me down here, so that when I bring around the other side it's got that to attach onto. So I think it's kind of a bit of a patchy kind of a stage now because you want to work this one along and then overlap it there slightly. You just want that nice red finish. So I'm going to add the glue to again one half of this and I might actually I guess you could do it joined together, you know, have a little play around. There's going to be, you know, a few ways that I'm sure some of you will do this. But um, I'm going to do it like this and then let's just see how we go with it. So I'm just going to stick that one down on here. 
with a little bit over hanging there but I'm not going to stick up that side for the minute okay so again stuck that all on the inside and then I'm gonna I don't need the overhang I've got it overhanging on this side here and also on this side but I don't need it on both so I'm just going to trim that one off and then I can actually stick a lot of this over on itself so or wrap it around so I'm gonna because it's obviously joined just there go along And kind of as we stick the last bit is when we join it all together as well. So um, I'm just going to go as far as I can. I know I've gone off camera a little bit there, but I'm just going to wrap this. I mean, if you want to do it in stages, you can. I'm just going to, this does grab, like I said, very quickly, this glue. Get a nice, you know, tight wrap around the bottom there because this is all visible this is your your lid now so we want this to look really neat such a long piece <laughs> okay i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it slightly for the sake of just that last little join i'm actually going to trim this so i wouldn't even have the whole overhang it, you know like i said some of you will probably put this together slightly differently um but i'm going to do it this way i just think it's going to be a bit easier and then i'm just going to add the last hinge piece over all of this in a minute okay so now I can bring this all around if you want to add and cover all of this now you can but I think I'm going to cover it with one it's when it's in that position I'm going to cover it with one piece of pattern paper so you won't see it but now we can bring this around and you can just add the final hinge so let's add the glue to that and this one will kind of you know tell you where it needs to go so you don't really need to worry about the angles or anything because it you know it can only go that way but make sure you get it really nicely joined and it's the same level and then just kind of fold that piece around as well. Still a little bit flimsy at the minute because we haven't attached all of these pieces but now if you bring over this and sit it on there, fingers crossed, it will go on. I think once it finds its shape when we stick all of this together but it won't drop down any further. That's, you know, look at it. It looks really cool, definitely works. So I'm really pleased with that. So let's just take that off. It'll be easier once we join all of this. So I think now you wanna work your way around each one kind of separately. I don't think I gave that a chance to really dry there. I don't really wanna play with it too much because I don't wanna put too much pressure on these corners still while it's drying. So I think what we need to do is get this all attached. So I've got, you know, lots of kind of scrap pieces here. So if you want to have them so that they go from the top all the way down and under there, then you can. But I think I'm just gonna do my down into like hit this kind of section. So I've got this scrap one here, for example, but you're gonna to have to trim bits off as you work your way around. Um, you could also trim it, but I do think I want it to, let me just, I want to do one first and I'll, you know, I'll put it on slightly, you know, fast forward it a bit, but I just want to test this one and just see how it's going to work. Okay, I'm going to open them out because I think you can just kind of let them like ball, you know, kind of just um, sit that, don't like push them right the way back. But I'm just kind of working this in. You want to make sure you can see inside there that they're right up to each other, as close as you can. And then with this bit here, I think I'm just going to try and see how's best for it to shape itself around. You almost want to do something like that, bearing in mind I'm going to be covering this with pattern paper. So, and obviously lots of other bits of decorations, but can you see I've kind of, you get this like piece like that. So you could always trim that away if you wanted to, or you could fold it in on itself. But I think because I'm going to be covering that with a strip of pattern paper, 
I can just kind of leave it like that really, you're not really going to notice it. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this because I'm going to have a long piece, I might even have some trims, I've got some nice ribbons and stuff, so you, you're really not going to see any of that. Um, but I think that's the, the simplest way to have it as one long piece. And then with this bit at the top here, because again I'm going to be adding a little flag to the top of this, so I'm not too worried on how it, it looks to a degree, but just do something like that, I think that's going to be fine. And now you can add the next one over onto that one and so on, because the inside, like I said, is just going to be longer kind of triangular strips that I'm just going to cover all inside and I might even do a little bit of paper mache as well because that will really add a lot of strength to this so but for the minute I think that's the easiest thing to do so that strip that I had there was um kind of went around about six and a half by one inch so you'll want six of those Okay, so I'm just down to the last one. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's going to look fantastic. So just thinking about the overall kind of finish, I do want that flag. So I've got one of these craft sticks and I'm going to just kind of pop it in there just to check. In fact, I think I'm going to have room without it. So yeah, I can remove it. There's going to be a hole there, but it's worthwhile just checking. You might have to stick something in there now just so you've got it ready to be able to attach your flag. You can trim it and, you know, cut it from inside if you want to, because once that last one goes in, you're going to be sealing both sides. But I think I'm going to have a nice enough little gap there just to pop that through when I do need to. So I'm just going to carry on now and get the last two bits done. Okay, so there is the lid. So let's see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh my God, it's perfect. Oh, look at that. It looks amazing. I'm so pleased. So, so pleased this has worked. And then again, I'll get a better stick. I've got quite a few of these because this one's already starting to break. But And I'll probably wrap some washi tape and stuff, but that's going to be perfect for the flag. So now I'm going to go and sort out all my pattern papers and how I want to decorate this, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've just been kind of thinking about what it is I want to use. I've got this striped paper from the Circus Paper Pad and I'm going to have this on five of the six sides. The one on the front, I'm going to have some curtains draped open and I'm going to have a fussy cut all of these from the front page of the 12 by 12 pad. This is what I've got left of the front cover because on the reverse they have all these wonderful images that you can fussy cut. So I've done most of them. I want this large circus sign right on the front there. I think it's going to look brilliant. Like I said, with the curtains open and then I'm going to have the ringmaster, you know, with his arms open like that. It looks like he's kind of welcoming everybody into the show. And then I've got the little wooden show sign, which I'm going to have there. And then I'm probably on each side, I'm going to have one of these lovely cut out, you know, images here. That's the idea with the front. So you're going to need... Well, in total, you're going to want six for the front and then six to actually decorate the inside as well. Or, well, not necessarily decorate it, but certainly to cover the inside. So in total, you'll want 12 pieces of four by seven and three quarters. OK, and then for the front here, I haven't decided on the pattern paper for the top. I'm thinking the stripe, but I just want to just double check myself once I put start putting more pieces together but I know I definitely want red over here because what I've gone and done is I've made this bunting and I've just punched a load of one inch circles in yellow and then cut them in half and I've stuck them all along this piece of twine and the idea is is that I'm going to have five kind of draped on each side like so and I'll stick each one as well so they all stay intact. But I think against the red, that's going to look really nice. So I've got 32 pieces there because I just wanted to make sure I've got enough. But I just stuck all that on there. So you'll see me doing that. So these pieces here, again, you're going to want 12 because you'll need to cover the inside. And these are one and a quarter by four and a quarter. Then you're also going to want to cover the inside base. And this is when if you grab your template again that you would have used when you cut the grey board and just sit it over a piece of you know card and just trace around it but then just cut it in slightly smaller on each side so you can lay it inside there 
so I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to yeah get all of that kind of in place and then hopefully by then I'll know a bit more on the patterns that I want to use for the top and inside and I'll give you the measurements for those. Okay, so I have done all of the matte layers and then the bunting on here. I think it looks really nice. And then I'm going for this stripe on the top here, which I'm going to show you um, how I've cut the sizes for that. To cover the inside, you basically want to cut the same size of this grey board six times to cover all of there and the same size of this grey board here. So what the measurements I gave you at the beginning, just do six of each just to cover all of the inside however you want. I'm probably just going to do plain red. And then I've started doing the inside here but I need to find some more red card. Um, I might have to just patch with some other tones of red but you can see how everything's covered nicely, even the bottom there using the template. Um, I may do the bottom, it looks pretty neat anyway so I probably will leave it. And um, yeah, so that's where we are with that. So I'm just going to talk you through this really easy. I've just cut a strip, I've just cut a piece of five inch pattern paper. This is the whole width of a 12 inch piece because it's from the paper pad. And then along the top, I've just marked with a pencil at one and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, and then you just draw a line from this bottom corner up to there. And then along the bottom here, I do a marker at three and three quarters. And then bring that one down. And then from that pencil mark, you do three and three quarters. Then you can draw up from there up to that point. And then again from this point, you'll do three and three quarters. And then from that point, you'll do three and three quarters and so on. And that way you don't waste any of your card or your, you know, your nice pattern papers and you get the same size triangles within all those sections. So all I need to do now, you can also just cut one triangle and then draw around it. Use it as a template if you'd rather do that. But with my um, trimmer now, I'm just popping it in there. I can rub out you know, any little bits of pencil if there's some left, but I can just go through now. It's just a really quick way to get the most from your papers, but also to get those quick triangles. So I've got a little bit of the, um, the pencil there. I mean, if I've drawn the pencils for you guys to see in the video, you know, you can just do little dots of pencil and then just line those up dot to dot kind of thing in your trimmer. Um, you know, either way will work. So I've got those now ready to stick. I'm also still thinking about the front here. Parts of me are thinking to do yellow with the red curtains because I've actually just pulled up some tent images here on my phone and I like this one here and it's got kind of an orangey yellow you know, inside there, which I really like, but then you can see kind of a bluey color behind that happy birthday there. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna have a play around with that, but whatever size you do, it will be the same size as the measurements that I gave you for this piece here anyway. So yeah, I'm just now gonna finish off all the decoration, all of this detail, and then I'll show you it at the end. So 
it's all decorated, I love it. I've changed a few things, so I did have a wooden sign there, but I've changed it for the fussy cut one on the back of the front page, because it's the same as these ones, I just thought the proportions were better. So you can see I've got the lion, I've got the monkey, um, I've got the seal and the showman, and I've fussy cut the little stars, and then I've got the elephant and I put a little bow on there, and I've got the strong man. And I've left the very back one empty there. Everything's the same that I showed before on the front here, but I have added some sparkle pen to the flag. The flag was just any height you want, really. I d you would have seen me in the video, but obviously it was on high speed, but I just wrapped it around one of those little craft sticks, and then I've just curled the edges and put a little flag tail in it. So, I mean, you can do, if you're giving this as a gift or something, you might want to put someone's initial on there, or, you know, it's entirely up to you, and then you just take the lid off. It has got a nice fit. The one thing I would say, it's gone maybe a little bit tighter, just because of the lining inside here. So that's all lined now as well. It's still drying a little bit there. I wished I'd used my Kalau, not my Cosmic Shimmer, because there's a few bits where it's warped and that's what I hate. That's why I always use the Kalau. So I don't know why I've done that. It's fine all around the sides here, but just on that bit there, maybe I went a bit heavy with it. But anyway, it still you know, looks fab. I think once it dries, it'll flatten. I keep rubbing over it and it does seem to be getting a bit better. And then all inside, I also had to patch a little bit in here because I'd run out of the red strips, but who's gonna see that? You know, it's inside and I'm gonna fill it with all of my wool and some of my strings and stuff. Or maybe I might put a lot of my scrap strings because they were in my swan, but they're kind of overflowing. So I'm thinking this might be a bit better for them all, but it's just a lovely solid piece of storage and I've really enjoyed making it. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I can't wait to see your versions and hope you share them over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page. Thank you for watching. As always, if you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't and I have a whole playlist of storage ideas, which if I haven't already shared it, I'll share it up here and I'll be back again soon with another video. Thanks for watching, bye.